In this example, we have a letter which is fixed by a hinge to the vertical wall. So there is a hinge here and the letter is fixed to it. So let's say this is point B and this is point A. At point A, the letter simply rests on the floor. There is an external force F acting on the letter at point A and the force is directed exactly horizontal. Um, the letter is said to be uniform and we are given the mass of the letter mass M the question is what is the reaction force that the hinge at point B exerts on the letter what is the reaction force from the hinge on the letter so to start with uh, we we need, we need to start with a free body diagram free body diagram so let's draw a free body diagram for the letter now when we have a problem on static equilibrium on a free body diagram an object is drawn as is rather than a point so this is my letter and now I have to show all the forces that are acting on the letter. So first of all, there is an external force F pointing this way. Then there is a gravity force acting from the center of the letter, exactly pointing down. So this is MG. There is also a normal force acting from the floor on the letter and is perpendicular to the, to the floor. So the normal force is pointing this way. And then there is a reaction force from the hinge. Now, we don't know the actual direction of the reaction force, but we do know that it should have X and Y components. So let's introduce x and y axis. Let's say that y is pointing upwards and x is pointing to the left. So in this case, you should have a y component of the force and an x component. Now, depending on the problem, it could turn out that, you know, the x component is actually pointing in the reverse direction or the y component is pointing in the reverse direction if this happens so it means that you know uh, the value that you get for rx and ry will be negative that's all but just to start with uh, let's direct them in the positive directions like this and let's work out for rx and ry so now we have a free body diagram and now uh, with the free body diagram, we can write the equations for static equilibrium. The first equation of static equilibrium says that if the object is in a static equilibrium, then the sum of all forces is equal to zero. So this means that sum of all forces in the x direction and in the y direction add up to, add up to zero. So let's look at the x direction first. In the x-direction, we only, we only have two forces, F and Rx. So we can say that Rx, which is pointing in the positive x-direction, minus F, and minus is because F is pointing in the negative, equal 0. Now, for y-axis, we have M pointing in the positive direction, RY pointing in the positive direction, and MG pointing in the negative direction. So I have RY plus N minus MG equals zero. So from this equation, from the upper equation, you can already say that the RX component is equal to F. 
So we have one component. From this equation, you can see that Ry is equal to mg minus m. So now we need to find normal force m. Uh, to do that, we can now use the second condition for static equilibrium, which says that the sum of all torques is also equal to zero. Now, this condition, because it deals with torques, requires that you specify uh, a point about which you want to calculate. In fact, torques about any point will add up to zero if the object is in static equilibrium. But you have to choose a point such that you simplify your solution. Now, how can you simplify your solution? You can simplify your solution by choosing a point from which you have two or more forces coming out. So either, for example, this point or this point. Why do you want to do that? The reason being is that if you choose, for example, this point, then you don't need to calculate the torques for these two forces because they are automatically zero with respect to this point. Similarly, if you choose this point, you don't need to calculate the torques created by these two forces because these two forces with respect to this point have zero torque. And which point you choose, again, is up to you. So, let me choose the torques about this point B. So, we're calculating torques about point B. So, about, about point B, we have three torques. The torque created by M, the torque created by F, and the torque created by MG. So, the torque created by M, torque created by F, and the torque created by mg. To get rid of the vectors, we first need to define the positive direction. To define the positive direction, you just use your right hand. So if the force is trying to move, to rotate the letter uh, in a counterclockwise direction, the direction of your thumb will point the, into the positive direction. So in this case, the positive direction is out of the board. So we choose out of, we choose out of the board direction as positive. We choose the out, outside direction as positive. So now let's find the direction of each of these torques. So for example, let's look at M. M is trying to rotate the letter in a clockwise direction. So using your right hand rule, if you direct your fingers in a clockwise direction, your thumb will be pointing into the board. So the torque created by normal force with respect to point B is pointing into the board. The torques created by F and MG, you can try it for yourself are pointing out of the board. So if we have chosen the out of the board direction is positive, it means that this will be negative, so minus Tn, Tf is positive, and Mg is also positive. So now we need to find the magnitude of this torque. Well, the easiest way is, for example, let's start with the normal, is to draw the line of action of the force. So this is our line of action. And then drop a perpendicular from the pivot point to the line of action. So we drop a perpendicular like this. This is called the R. The R is equal to, if you, if you say that this angle here is, for example, theta, and this angle is theta, and if the length of the letter is equal to L, 
then the arm is equal to L cosine theta. So you will say that torque is equal to force M times L cosine theta. What about F? The line of action for the force F is this line. If you drop a perpendicular from, from the pivot point, this will be the arm. To calculate for the arm, you multiply L times sine theta. So, force F is, torque for the force F is F times L sine theta. Now, what about MG? Again, this is our line of action. This is the perpendicular. So we need to find this distance here. Remember, mg is acting from the center of the letter. So this side is equal to L over 2. If this side is L over 2, it means that this distance here is L over 2 cosine theta. So plus mg L over 2 cosine theta equals zero. So from here now, you can calculate for m. Length will cancel out, and you just have m left, so m is equal to f tangent theta plus mg over 2. So once you know your normal force, you can use it to calculate for R1. So R1 is therefore equal to mg over 2 minus f tangent theta. Now, in the problem, we are given dimensions, we are given that this side is equal to 4 meters and the length of the letter is equal to 5 meters. If this is 5 and this is 4 from the Pythagorean theorem, this has to be equal to 3 meters. If so, then tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 4 over 3. And we can use it when calculating for R1. So let's now write down our final answers. For Rx, it is equal to F, and therefore is equal to 20 Newton. Ry is equal to, mass of the letter is 6, Pre-fall acceleration 9.81 over 2 minus 20 times tangent of theta, which is actually 4 over 3, so we can just write 4 over 3 here. So 4 over 3. And this gives you um, 2.76. 2.76 Newton. So both are x and our y are positive. So, to summarize, you have Rx pointing this way and Ry pointing this way. And this is your total reaction force R. Now, the magnitude of the Reaction force is the Rx plus Ry squares, square root. If you substitute for numbers, you should get 20.2 newtons. You can also calculate for this angle here. Let's call it alpha. So alpha is equal to 
86 degrees just by looking at the sides of this triangle and using the tangent you can calculate for the angle alpha so it turns out that the hinge is exerting a force which is directed at a small angle of 7.8 degrees this way and is equal to 20.2 newtons and also please remember that when you have something which is fixed to a hinge like here the force that is exerted by the hinge on the ladder is not necessarily perpendicular as for example the normal is and is not necessarily along the ladder which uh, sometimes students think 